Our first question is just to introduce yourself. What is your name and what do you do? We'll start with Luke. Hey, my name is Luke Steinhauer. I'm a voice consultant and an MBA candidate at Baruch College. Hi, I'm Anita Raja, professor of computer science at Hunter College and Graduate Center. I also direct the Distributed Artificial Intelligence Research Lab. Hi, my name is Johanna Strobel. I'm an interdisciplinary artist and I teach studio art at Hunter College. Hi, my name is Brian Haggerty. I'm an ecologist and I'm an adjunct lecturer in environmental sciences at Baruch College. Hi, my name is Ryan Ulang. I'm a director of the Advanced Science Research Center in the, the area of nanoscience and I'm also a professor of chemistry at Hunter College. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, and our next question is also for everyone. It's just, what does TED mean to you? And we'll start with Luke. TED is such an amazing organization, um, I guess, global phenomenon now at this point. Um, I, I really am amazed at how many ideas are, are worth sharing and, and I'm grateful that I get to share my ideas and I'm grateful that I get to receive the ideas from others and that's why I love TED. So TED to me is an opportunity to share about my area of expertise, uh, the research that is ongoing um, and also the work that I'm doing in my lab with my students and get others excited about it. As an interdisciplinary artist, I'm doing research in all kinds of different fields so I'm really excited about the interdisciplinarity of TED. I've watched TED Talks for many years, and one thing that I always walk away with is some intellectual ideas and some type of inspiration or emotional momentum that comes from it. And so to me, it really means inspiring audiences. And so as somebody who's been inspired by many of these talks, I'm really happy to be sharing the stage and to be able to bring that to life for everybody else too. Yeah, for me, TED means an, a really an opportunity to uh, to try to uh, explain to the world what we are trying to achieve in the, in my lab, and hopefully inspire some people um, and and share uh, what 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 the future may look like in the, in our area of science. So it's um, I think a, a very nice platform for um, uh, co complex ideas to be you know deliberately explained in ways that that are accessible. So awesome. thank you guys. Uh, Luke can get us started with our next question. How did you feel when you first learned that you were selected to be a TEDx keynote speaker? I was thrilled. I, I, I couldn't believe that um, I was given this opportunity at what I feel like is uh, at an early stage of my career. Um, it felt similar to I was an actor <laughs> before this and when I would get a role or something, it, would, it felt similarly. So I'm just uh, really grateful to be sharing my ideas with, at TEDx CUNY. So I would say I was also happy to receive the invite. Uh, it's nice to know that others know about our work within Hunter and also to have this chance to share it with students and you know, folks in New York in general. So, uh, yeah. So my question to you, Anita, is what was your favorite part about working on your TED Talk? I think I would say the organization, uh, the level of organization uh, that is involved in starting off with very abstract ideas of where the talk should go, or what are the main uh, concepts that we want to share, and then drilling down, you know, how do we get this uh, idea shared in a, in a way which is comprehensible to a very broad audience. Uh, even though I've given talks within certain deadlines, you know, most of our conference talks are timed. This was a different process uh, because of the number of topics that we could co cover and still um, make sure we have both the balance of the breadth and the depth um, that needs to be in a TED Talk. Our next question is for Joanna. What, how did you feel after rehearsing your TED Talk for the first time? I felt very excited, but also like there was a lot of work in front of me. Does anyone else also feel that way? Is there still a lot of work in front of us? <laughs> <laughs> Writing, cr the creative process, I think in any field, whether we're artists, musicians, scientists, anything, sometimes that creative process can just flow right through us and sometimes it can be grueling. Mm -hmm. And I think I've experienced both of those settings in developing my ideas. Um, and so it's been fun to to like manage my way through that. It's also been challenging at points, but that's part of why I wanted to give a TED Talk was to challenge myself to, to formulate some of the ideas that I've been working on for a long time 
but to bring them all into one cohesive idea. And that's been a really fun intellectual challenge. You guys talked about the challenge of creating a TED Talk. Uh, one of those challenges being in UW, you talk, touched on all of the different possibilities. How did you go about addressing this challenge? How did you, with all of the possibilities, figure out what it was that you wanted to focus on and how you wanted to focus on it in a way that was easy to understand? I mean, for me, it was um, talking to people um, about the ideas and basically running ideas by people and does this work and, uh, and deliberately, you know, uh, colleagues, uh, experts, as well as, uh, you know, my, my, my son, my friends. And uh, then, you know, I think then eventually the um, if things start to fall into place. Um, some things work, some things don't work. So it's like an evolution of ideas uh, that, that eventually um, come together uh, kind of by magic. I think in the beginning, it's quite daunting, um, starting with a big brainstorm and eventually coming, uh, coming out with a, uh, a coherent story. And I think very much thanks to the, uh, the, the, the team and having a curator uh, helping out so much has been really incredible in that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would second that. I can't em emphasize how important it has been to work with the team, this uh, organizing team, which are all students, you know, giving their time to for us to brainstorm ideas, to practice our talks, give feedback. And I feel every time we have met, it, there has been an improvement. I finally mm -hmm. have my talk within the deadline <laughs> and uh, want, I'm saying what I want to say. So I think it's a good balance a month before the deadline. So. Mm -hmm. I watched a lot of TED Talks and I watched a lot of TED Talks by artists and I was thinking what I could do because I I felt like it was, um, I didn't want to do something like, I did that and then I did that and now I'm doing that because I thought that's maybe not what I, what the audience would find is, is, um, inspiring. So I thought a lot about what, who my audience would be and what I could say that maybe I would have wanted to hear or that could, could have been inspiring for me. So in the end, I decided to not talk about my work, but create something that would function like a work that I could make. So yeah. We'll see how that goes, I guess. <laughs> Our next question is, what advice do you have for Canadian students? And we'll start with Brian. Yeah, so I teach at Baruch College, uh, which is known nationally as a social mobility college, um, improving the lives of students and getting them into, into the workforce in high paying positions. So with that kind of context in mind, um, you know, one of the things that often doesn't get acknowledged is that people often think going to college is just simple. You take some classes and then you get your degree and you move on. But it's so incredibly complex to be a student in the modern college era where classes are just kind of the basic currency of the everyday. And it's really about building your internship, building your networks, building relationships with everybody around you to cultivate a career and to really grow it from the beginning in your college career. So I suppose my suggestions to CUNY students would be to, um, I think we were talking a little bit earlier, to zoom out and see that entire scope of your career developing. And at each moment of the way, try to find little bits and pieces that you can accomplish within say a given semester to build one important relationship that has a strong foundation to it. With the professor, with some grad students, with your students, other faculty members. And along the way, self-care is essential. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, we all started talking about self-care a lot more during the pandemic. And then it just kind of fell out of the common conversation. And I think that, especially as students, learning genuine self-care that supports your well-being and that supports your career growth is a really important skill to hone early on in your life and college is a great time to um, get a counselor to try to find your way forward with what works for you and what doesn't and to build your career with that as a foundation i think there's you know a common theme that is uh, now true for education at the undergraduate graduate level is interdisciplinarity um, most of our works are interdisciplinary. That's where the world is moving. So I would encourage students to not, you know, be stuck in a particular uh, pipeline to, to look at other areas, see what the new connections are and create their unique pathway through their education, you know, uh, 
And so what is it that sets them apart? Um, and what is of interest? So the other thing I would say is, is, is make sure you, you enjoy the process, that there's joy. Uh, sometimes I have to repeat that to myself, uh, no matter you know if it's a challenging thing, where is the joyful part of this process? And then you do find the good things. And uh, that I think allows you to be persistent uh, through finishing up college and getting into grad school or t taking up a job. So. Our next question is, what do you want the audience to take away uh, once they're done listening to your talk? And we'll start with Ryan. Um, I'd like uh, the audience to uh, maybe share uh, some of, um, I think, our um, um, you know, e excitement about how uh, the biological world solves problems. So um, if, you, if you think about um, the large number of challenges that we are facing now with uh, things like sustainability, uh, climate change, uh, th things like that, the solutions to these problems can be found often in the biological world. The, the bi biology is an amazing um, innovator. And um, I, it's complex. Um, it's not something that can be uh, achieved very quickly or overnight. But I think we live in a really interesting time now where with, with the help of things like, like AI, a lot of this work can be completely accelerated and we can actually really start thinking about um, you know, building new things the way biology does it. So, it sounds like an, quite an abstract concept, and I hope that people walk away with some idea that this is actually uh, going to be possible in the future. So that, that would be uh, my, my plan for this, for this talk. To build off that, mm. um, I'll be speaking about climate change, and part of what I'll be talking about is the use of natural solutions, using nature to try to build resilience into our cities, and using nature to be able to connect to natural world so that we have a better understanding of the pace of climate change and what's happening around us. That's neat. I'll be talking about a lot of things, but networks of care, love, and solidarity are one of them. And I hope that this is a takeaway, mm -hmm. that it's important that we all stand together and help each other and change the world together. I guess the goal of my talk would be to demystify AI. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, there are a lot of different views of what artificial intelligence is. So, so I'd like people to understand what it is, what it is not, where it is going, um, and what needs to be done to make sure it's going in the path that would uh, you know, help humanity. Oh my gosh, she said my words. I, my my <laughs> role is demystifying the voice. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I I want people to understand that vocal control is is within your reach and, and very possible um, if you spend some time getting to know your own vocal instrument. Um, you can use it, again, if you're a singer, obviously that's where most voice training is done, but mostly for speakers and everyday voice users. Um, you know, once you understand how your voice works and all the possibilities you can uh, use it for, um, you can basically do whatever you want with it. Our next question is for everyone. Um... What sentence are you proudest of in your talk? We'll start with Luke. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I say that uh, strategic and effective communication is more than just what you say. It's, it's also how you say it. Um, and there's research to back that up. But that's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> um, so the North Star of my work the past couple of decades has been to build algorithms and systems which assist human beings, you know, uh, make their lives better. And uh, I truly believe that if artificial intelligence is done in a safe, transparent, accountable, and just way, it would benefit humanity in a great way. It's really hard for me to answer that because I made something that is visual and auditory and also includes movement. So maybe I can answer that question, <laughs> but I'm excited about bringing these things together. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a joyful process. <laughs> it is. Like, yes. 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 <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, let me see if I can <laughs> bring it in here. Um, so despite all the noise around our climate emergency, the fact remains that we've never been better positioned with the alignment of science, 
policy, technology, finance, education, and public engagement. So to accelerate climate progress, we need, we really need to work across these boundaries and across generations and confront these realities of our changing world. And I think that the real catastrophe here would be stepping back right at the exact moment we need to push forward. Mm -hmm. Very excited to, uh, to hear the talks, having heard these, uh, these snippets. Now. Well, I got finished right yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if everything could be built using biological principles from biomolecules? Um, and we just have one last question, also for everyone. Uh, the conference is very close upon us, maybe scarily close. Uh, but what are you most looking forward to about the conference and conference day? We'll start with Luke. Sorry, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm excited about being physically in that room. Um, I, you know, work with, again, mostly artists. Um, and I think it will be cool to be in a space where there will be many types of people um, there from all ages, you know. Um, and I just like sort of embracing that energy. And um, it makes me more excited to share what, what I have to to share um, with all those people. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the reactions of the audience and also interacting with them afterwards. Um, and I'm also, you know, very excited about collaborating with several of the speakers. We already are in conversations. Uh, we, there's several areas of overlap of where our MOOC work uh, could, could, you know, lead to collaborations. So looking forward to that. I'm really excited to hear all the other talks because I'm really, I love lectures and I love learning new things. So I'm really excited about what you will, will all be speaking about. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm most excited about is the celebration that is the actual day of conference. Mm -hmm. And the, the team here has just been amazing at helping me and I think us realize that, yeah, we're getting up and giving one talk, but it's a, a process. And so by getting to that day, it really is a celebration and not just of us, but of the whole team mm -hmm. and of our entire community that's there for that day and for people who are gonna watch the videos afterwards. So I think the idea of a celebration is, um, is what I'm really excited about. Yeah, I love that. And I, I think it's been said already, but I, I very much look forward, especially having heard a little bit more now about what everybody's gonna be talking about or hearing the other talks and, uh, you know, use that also as a springboard for uh, hopefully further, further collaborations in the future. So uh, I think it's gonna be a really fun day. Uh, the last question is just, is there anything else that you wanna share that I didn't ask you about that you wish I had? And if there's not, if I'm just an expert interviewer and I got everything, that's also okay. But just in case I missed something that you wanna tell people. You're, You're the best expert. Yeah. <laughs> You're an expert moderator. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Very good.